Hi, everybody. Welcome to Civil Engineering Today. This month, our show is going to be primarily about, not Boston, but Chelsea this time, and the Lewis Latimer Society. I have our guest this week is Ron Robinson, and he's the director of the Lewis Latimer Society. And for people who don't know what the Lewis Latimer Society is, it's a very important group. And Ron's going to start us off. Just uh, tell us a little about Lewis Latimer. Well, Lewis Latimer was... Um a 19th century inventor and scientist. He actually, I was writing some notes outside, but uh, he was part of the second industrial revolution. But the story of revolution is that he was, um, excuse me, uh, Louis Latimer was, he was born in Chelsea in, in um, 19, uh, 1848. And he was the son of an escaped slave. And when their family moved, they moved around actually because they were escaped slaves. So when they ended right. up in Boston, they they uh, uh, were part of a network of uh, of, a, of people that were, you know, running the Underground Railroad. Yep. So they ended up to be placed in Chelsea. So him and three of other three other. His three older siblings were born in the city. And at one point, his father, around the time of the Dred Scott decision, around yep. 1850, 51, something like that, he took off from the family because he was in fear of being caught as an escaped slave and could have been sent back to his master in Virginia. So he ended up in Lynn, living the rest of his life out in Lynn. Uh, he was also a friend of Frederick Douglass um, and, and others. And um, he, he, as I said, he, he, the family didn't know he was in Lynn. They, he didn't want to let them know because of the dangers to them. Right. Well, back then, it was no telephones or anything like that. So it was really hard to right. know what was happening, even though miles-wise, it was a pretty short Well, the, the thing is that... Um, in them times, it was Boston, Chelsea, Lynn, Salem, and then up to Gloucester and the different areas in terms of underground for people trying to get up to Canada, that sort of thing. Um, Lewis uh, was, um, as he was growing up, he, was, uh, he loved to read, he loved to write, and he loved to draw. Um, he became, as I said, an inventor, but he, he, he also was a draftsman. Um, he was a Civil War vet who actually fought in the Civil War in the Navy. His two older brothers fought in the Army, and that's, a, you know, that's in itself is something to me. Anyway, right, as a right. veteran, you know, for three siblings and one family to fight. But for African Americans, it was almost like their duty to join the military to fight for freedom, okay? Even though they were in the North and they were so-called free, they still fought for freedom. Um, family was poor here. Um, father, when he was around, he, um, he was a barber and a wallpaperer. Now, a lot of this information I, we have been able to um, compel the artifacts, some of them. Yeah, you've got a, a good collection. That sort of thing. Over in the library. Yeah, everything from Chelsea. letters from Frederick Douglass to Louis Latimer to his, obviously his birth certificates and his uh, um, um, particular writings that he had, particular writings. We were fortunate enough in, we started the society in 1998. And we actually became aware of Lewis Latimer in around 1993 because in our town we were doing these Black History Month celebrations. And, our, and the year that we, we came across him, there was some folks in Chelsea at the time, they were alive, that believed they were descendants of his. And she, she was, right? Well, they were descendants of, they, of the Latimer family because of that Lynn connection. Um, the woman, 
Miss Bennett, her name was, she, I used to sit and talk with her all the time. Cause yeah, she, I've seen the pictures. You know, and she well. saved, she, would, she was like a historian for, for uh, the African American community, but indirectly. <laughs> she would just, because of her kids, the schools they went to, I went to, and other people went to, and they would save things and information about people in the local media and things like that. So she had this book, and it said Louis Latimer, Black Inventor. So she would let me borrow the things to do the Black History Month celebration. So when the first year and I opened it up, and I see Bond and Chelsea Mass, we never... Right, heard. it didn't come up in school. No, no. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we, when I went to school, that was a long, long time ago, we were taught that we were no more than slaves. We were taught that. And I always knew we had to do something <laughs> he had to make some contributions to this to this uh, country and um, in this world. So coming across him, and then in 1990, as I said, 1998, we started the society. My brother Leo and I. Um, at the same time, he, Lewis had one living descendant, and that was her name was Dr. Winifred Latimer Norman. Mm -hmm. And she resided in New York City in Manhattan. So when we, f we found her, we went to visit her, asked if we can come visit her to find out more about her grandfather and how we could utilize him as a role model for local kids. Um, so we became excellent friends. And at the same time, she was involved with the home that he was born in, excuse me, the home that he passed away in, or lived in the last 20 years of his life, had been abandoned for years. So a, a group of people in Manhattan, or in New York, got together and they saved the house. They raised money and they, the city was gonna tear it down and they petitioned the city to make it a museum. So today it's a house museum. So we came in on that. So we were running back and forth to New York, <laughs> pre-openings, openings, <laughs> and all of this. I think I was telling this story about uh, uh, one time she called and said that on Sunday, we're gonna be having a, a day at the Latimer House. So I go, well, what's gonna happen? You know, they'll be reading, he, he also was a poet. Oh, I didn't he, know that. Yeah, he was a poet, musician, artist, he was, he was a renaissance man. Actually, we haven't talked about his inventions yet. Let's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, his, his, his number one invention was the, uh, um, he, he, he did a process of, for, with carbons for the filament in the light bulb. The other important invention he was involved in was the telephone. He drew the first known patent for Bell. We have his uh, log book where he actually tells the story of him meeting Alexander Graham Bell. Bell taught at BU. They would meet at night. And, you know, they talked in the third person in those days. You know, he'd say uh, him and the, uh, me, uh, me and the young man would get together after work and either would be in visit his house to work, that sort of thing. Because at the time, he was working for... Uh, um, Patent lawyers on on um, which street is that? <laughs> it's downtown. Downtown. Right? It's uh, um, by Post Office Square, right? No. Um, no. Where the Parker House is. Oh, that's um, that's Tremont Street. Not Tremont. Uh, the other uh, it goes down. School Street. School Street. Okay. Yeah, we've done. With I know one time we did with Fox Twenty Five a uh, promo regarding where the phone was um, telephone was invented in the building, they asked us to, you know, they talked about Latimer drawing the patent, but he actually worked for the, this uh, Cosby and Gould who were patent lawyers. So he really, his name's not on the patent. Right, right, but, but it's funny, he did, all, he did yeah. the work. He did the work, he drew it. Actually, Bell, see, when he went, originally went to the patent office, he was um, sweeping floors, office boy type thing. Somebody told him about the job. He had just come back from the Civil War. And um, somebody told him about 
the opening at this place. He went, he ended up as the office boy, but he used to peek over the shoulder of the draftsman as he was sweeping, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know? And he had a, a, he had a, a quote, um, whatever man knew, he put in the book. And he went out and bought the books he needed and the tools that he needed to become a draftsman. You know, when that particular area in Boston was a hotbed for inventors. And in fact, at one time, both him, Thomas Edison, and Bell were all in Boston at the same time. Right, and he was working with both, like two of the most famous inventors in American history, working with both of them at the same, same time. time. Well, I think... Um, and, and I know how Pat and Sire would, I mean, there's an incredible amount of trust. You know, there's other people competing for these patents. And well, he ended up working for Edison for, uh, so from best I can gather, around 40 years off and on. And he worked in different departments. One of them was to defend his Edison's patents because that was a real, real rat race in them days, stealing people's yeah. patents, you know, that sort of thing. So he would defend them in court. Especially when he didn't work at West Orange, New Jersey, uh, uh, Latimer. He worked in New York City. I think it was 55th Street in Manhattan. That's where uh, Thomas Edison originally was located. Yeah, makes sense. It's like Edison in New Jersey is like the name. Right. right. Edison, New Jersey. And then they went out there. That, in fact, that's still there. And last time I looked in Manhattan, um, and also, Manhattan is the home of the first electric power plant on Pearl Street in, in, the, uh, in Manhattan. And um, Edison, the story is Edison put Latimer up to write in the book about the plant and describing it. It's called um, Incandescent Lighting, a Practical Description of the Edison System. <laughs> That's a really yeah, technical that was in book. 18, <laughs> 1890. I believe, and I have a copy of that, which we got from his granddaughter. She she donated certain things so we'd have in our collection so we can educate people. You know, wouldn't be just word of mouth. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, his daughter was uh, his granddaughter was um, you know a fascinating woman within herself. She was a um, PhD social worker. She, she at one time was associated with the United Nations on aging. And when we met her, she was uh, pretty 86, 87 years old. And she has been, she had never, she only been to Boston once in her life at the time, she told us. Right, well, she's from New York, so. Right. But, um, you know, to us, she has been here a number of times, you know, and when she, ever she came to visit or to accept an award from somebody, that's one of the things we, have, you know, shine light on Lewis Latimer because not only was he from Chelsea, he was from Massachusetts. See, so, so um, we sort of brought the story to life. Um, right, it's actually a bigger story than it seems because there, there is no spotlight. I mean, Without a college education, he educated himself. He got the books he needed. He gave himself a right. college education. And he worked side by side with like the most famous inventors well, in I, history through his own hard work. I, I, I think, you know, unlike today where you, it's mandatory for you to have a college degree to, to accomplish something, in that particular time, and especially for technically minded people, it was more about the technical, how technically minded they were, you know, in terms of what they're, whatever they're developing or working on or whatever. And these are people that basically built this country. That's true, right. You right. Know, I mean, you even look, George Washington was an engineer or a surveyor himself and very... Abraham Lincoln was a... Lawyer. Bowie. Bowie, he invented. Oh, really? Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Know that. I know. Yeah, he did a book. He was from Illinois, 
So with the water, they, you know, it has they have the lakes on the lakes, right? And all that. So he ended up invite on um, developing that buoy. So what we try to do is work with young people in our town, kids that are willing. It's you know, uh, their world is centered around science and technology. It's it's already happening today. Right. It was then, and it's happening today, today. still. And it's the technology hasn't totally changed. I mean, it looks different because it's more high-tech looking, but... Right. So we've been fairly successful with um, giving young people an opportunity to come in to... We're, we're located in the Chelsea Public Library still. We've been in there since 2004. And we have... Um, we give them an opportunity to discover science and tech, because yeah. ordinarily they, they won't. They don't necessarily in, in, in uh, the public schools, at least. That, that's how we first met, actually, was with the, the games program that you yeah. put together. That was awesome. That was a great yeah. program. Well, we owe you a lot. No, not me. <laughs> well, you, yeah, you put the program together. <laughs> you, were, you were the engineering presence, and that brought others. The person like we all Michelle. owe a lot, we owe Sharon. Sharon Caulfield, Sharon Caulfield. So yeah, from Bunker Hill Community College, because Sharon was brought us all together. I've never seen someone who can actually do that as well as her. And she without trying. knows everything, right? And just yeah, just just have the ability to connect people. And Sharon, we we used to, we do a lot of field trips with young people. That's part of the uh, of learning, where you actually like I don't know, go to the Tobin Bridge, right. And, and get presentations from the staff of the bridge. And, but for a young person to say, on that bridge, and that bridge is swaying, and <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, I know that bridge very way impressive. too well. <laughs> that's impressive. That's the bridge I'm in the middle of inspecting right now. <laughs> uh, right. OK, and um, the uh, Think Fest that you had at Merrimack College, that was big for the kids, because Field trips are important so yeah. that they can see the world. And, and we're not stopping the Think Fest. It's just taken on a different name. Now it's part of Infrastructure Appreciation Day. So. <laughs> Fine. Get but it's going to travel. It's doing so this year. It sounds like it's going to be in Holyoke for the year. But last year it was in Ipswich. We're finding places where there's something really having a big anniversary or something. So oh, yeah. the Holyoke it's Canals are having their anniversary. Uh, the Chote Bridge had its 250th birthday last year, and that's why we had it there. And okay. uh, what, what, I know we've got lots coming up. Like, when you when you plan on doing that? Um, the date hasn't been scheduled. Okay. We, we know we want to have it on a, a nice warm weather day so that everybody can go and get out on the rent, you know, take kayaks and canoes. And well, that's an impressive <laughs> hands on science, technology activity. And I loved it, loved it because it was free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's everything. <laughs> everything. No I think, budget I think, or no budget. I mean, it's got to be. we got to do things for free. Yeah. I mean, why? the opportunity is only go to the kids that, that come from the towns where they've got either their parents have connections or the schools can afford it. And I think that's just ridiculous. It's, it's the business community's job to, to make these things free. I agree. And, and, but in our town, we had... Um, our biggest supporter was uh, a company named Alchemy's pharmaceutical company because uh -huh. they believed in kids in science and math. And I mean, actively, you know, they were going to schools too. To to uh, they had uh, the the manager or the plant manager was a phenomenal man, and he would actually do go right into schools and give classes to kids in the middle schools. So he believed, and he believed in what we were doing. And they showed you their belief, because we we do tours down there every year. And then um, it became a social, you know, the tour was somewhat social too, because the kids had to sit with the staff, the engineers, and, and talk about what they learned today. Right, and, and you know, because I, I do volunteering, and our whole crew, and Olivia, and everybody, we're volunteering all the time. We're, this weekend, we're going to do something called Geek is Glam, is the event that we're doing out in Worcester uh, this weekend. There's always something. And it's not, we're not educators. We're not teachers. We're just trying to be good role models and just 
talk like normal people with, with the kids. Well, I, 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 that's I, what we got to offer. I see. It's just enthusiasm. I see urban kids or inner city kids, however you want to say that. That's, that's comfortable for them. They relate to yeah. that. You know what I mean? They're not, you know, they relate to that a lot easier than you just yourself. I know I am and <laughs> with young people. Yeah. I don't hide nothing. Oh, well, I'm right up front. With yeah, them. definitely. You know what I mean? You so, gotta be. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're just mini versions of us, really. I mean. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. They're no you're different. absolutely right. Or, or they will be in the right. future. Um, I've had that all the time when I get co ops all the time, you know, and they're like, like, so many times they're like, you're giving all that work to a co op. I'm like, I'm just honored to have this co op. This co op's gonna be my boss someday. Right. <laughs> right. Just because they're a co op doesn't mean they're not like someone who's gonna really produce something. Right. Um, in fact, the uh, Alchemy, which is a pharmaceutical company, said that, that um, they were actually responsible. Partly responsible. Our, 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 in that program, Games was Girls Acknowledgement of Math, Engineering, and Science. Yep. It was an effort to get young, young girls involved. I love the things you were doing age. with them, taking them out on the field trips, and they were building the future cities and yeah. everything. They were well, so involved. Well, the proudest great. moment for me was future cities because, of course, we didn't win. But yeah, we but came you don't have to. It's, it's all about the talk. That's what I love about future cities in the first place. It doesn't matter whether you win or not. You, you shared your ideas. And, and everybody respected everything you were saying. It's just, right. it's just a great thing. I mean, but I felt we won because we walked out of there with the best educational city. So yeah, I, that's right. I that's was right. <laughs> blown away. <laughs> well, for the kids, because yeah, they're from Chelsea. Right. This is not a community that that's similar to others. It's, it's a funny community. It's a first-generation community for the most part. Yeah. It's got a big turnover. It's such a critical community because it is the starting place for so many people. And so many great people have come generation after generation. Absolutely. But then people forget about Chelsea. It's an incredible town. Well, because but we... Actually, we, we got we to gotta wrap up in a couple seconds. But Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any, okay, any other questions you want to ask? But um, I just want to talk quickly, just say, like, you know, my family comes from my great grandfather lived in Chelsea, my father, my brothers. I'm the first one born in the suburbs but right. from her family. And, you know, that's how I've always looked at Chelsea. It's such an important town. And you, and you your brother, and I know you're doing such wonderful things for Chelsea and just everything you're doing and bringing, bringing the name of Louis Latimer to the public. It's extremely important to everything you're doing. Well, uh, my family my Chelsea family, because I have a Boston family too, but <laughs> the, the Chelsea family has been there well over 100. We're still six or seven of us left. Right, you guys my are, grandmother was are the born heart and soul there. of the town. That's why it's really important, and I think it's great that you guys are doing it. So well, my, and my brother Leo, the co-founder, he's, he's a Cid, uh, Chelsea City Councilor, right. and he's actually the longest running city council in the city's history. He, prob he ran for mayor twice before the city changed, changed over to a, a city manager format. And, and if there was a return to the mayor, he would have a very good shot at becoming the mayor. If I lived there, I'd vote. <laughs> yeah. Actually, we, we've got to wrap up. Ron, thank you very, very much My for coming. Pleasure. This my Great. pleasure. And we'll be talking all the time anyway, but everybody, we'll be back next month for another episode of Civil Engineering Today. And thank you very much. Thanks, Ron. Thank you.